Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Question came up is about the effect of standing vertically, aligning your structure, uh, how that affects your energy, uh, but also how it affects your the way your your body supports itself and and the aches and pains that can come from standing in a way that is not efficient. So learning how to to line up your uh, your structure. So I've talked a lot about central equilibrium, primarily as an energetic concept, and I've gotten kind of a shorthand now way of expressing it. But if uh, people would like, we can kind of go back and, and explore it at a uh, on more of a physical basis, and which then leads to the uh, to the the energetic. So uh, the issue is is like particularly like when you're doing a Tai Chi form, how do you want to align your body and um, so that you can maximize the efficiency and minimize the, the aberrations that kick in, which usually are reflected in, in pains, like particularly pains in the back or in the, in the pelvic area, but also in the knees, the, the, uh, the feet, neck, things like that. So uh, uh, Kim asked if I'll be around. Yes, yeah, Saturday. Yes, we were around Saturday. So, uh, uh, so anyway, so let's, uh, let's do that. Let's go back and really kind of feel into that as a meditation and align ourselves feel into the uh, into the way that that verticality uh, affects the uh, the whole system okay so why don't you stand up please So we're going to go way, way back, peel back the layers and go back to basics on this. So it all starts with the feet. That is your, this is the point of contact with the earth. And so you want to feel your feet just kind of spreading out like, like they're kind of mushing as they make contact with the earth kind of so any tension that you have in your feet you want to let go of that and just notice notice first of all where you hold the uh, your where you center your weight whenever you're standing when you're standing still just become aware Try to notice if you are favoring one foot or the other in terms of where your weight is. Feel, feel your heel contacting the earth, the floor. Feel your toes touching. Feel along the inside of your foot, along the big toe line. And find the ball of your foot. Uh, there's one on each side. And you're still making contact with the rest of the, with the floor, with the whole foot but you want to feel that point of focus being the ball of the foot. 
And what that does, it allows your body to shift more toward the center where your, your body's weight is allowed to settle over the center of the foot rather than in the back of the foot, which is where the, uh, in the heel, which is where most of us spend a lot of our time. So uh, one of the things that pops up whenever I ask people to do this is, is rather than standing vertically, they'll lean forward like this to feel the, feel the ball of the foot. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the body is vertical. And if you were to draw a point from the crown of the head, down through the uh, perineum, the area between the uh, uh, between your genitals and your anus, where your legs meet. You drop a if you were to drop a plumb bob from there through the perineum, it would land somewhere around a line between the balls of your feet. So just to remember, the ball of the foot is this part right here. So that big knuckle there on your, on the big toe line. So you have that feeling, sense of being there. So if you go too far forward, you're into the toes. You're feeling the toes are having to work extra hard to keep you upright. You don't want, because that creates a tension in your foot. You don't want, you don't want that. You want the toes to be kissing the ground rather than straining. And notice that the weight, since you're on that ball of the foot, you're on the, the big toe line, on the interior of the foot, the, the medial line. Because that's what, that's where the, uh, the big stresses are, are designed in your body. The big bones are designed to handle the big stresses. And, and so the big toes are, are more suited for that load than say your little toes. So a lot of people stand with the weight on the outside of the foot or weight in the heels and doing that, just do that right now. Just kind of put your weight in your heels and, and feel the outside of the foot, feel on along the, the, the little toe line on the you know, laterally. And notice that to do that, you have to kind of tense up your lower back and your butt to, to make that to make that work you're, and plus you're, you're leaning backward you know you're if you're if you're like that your your center of gravity is is back here rather than up there right so you want to have your body so it lines up on the front third of your foot And what this does is it kind of creates an, an active young energy that engages you with life. Knees are unlocked. So just feel that relationship between the knees and the big toes and not the big toes that uh, the balls of the feet feel that those points of contact there that you're establishing a support a physical support which then creates an energetic support uh, doing that allows the yin chi from the earth to come up through the, the, uh, the bubbling wells points, kidney one points, which are right next to the, right next to the, the balls of the feet, toward, more toward the center line there. And so you're feeling that energy coming up through there. 
we want to get that structure because there's a stability that comes with that structure that comes with with feeling your your body's mass centered over that and doing that allows you to relax your upper body allows you to let go of muscular tension in your upper body you kind of sitting down into your legs as you do that. And to really get the feel of that, you, you know, push away from the earth and just this way we're, we're kind of doing what we do unconsciously all the time and then reverse that and just settle down into the leg. So you're, you're sitting into the, into the legs feeling that yin support of the legs as you do that. Now, reach up with the crown of your head and tuck in the chin. So we have these poles in opposition. But we're doing that right now by just standing here and really getting into the simplicity of this is we're creating a familiarity with that state that the uh, 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 it's a different way of holding the body in the world one that most of us don't do a lot and so even if we do it in class, we, you know, it feels really cool. But then if we forget about it afterward, it's like it doesn't really become part of who we are. So what we're doing right now is we're taking it a little bit deeper. And feeling ourselves sinking into the, into the legs, into the feet. Feeling that contact with the balls of the feet, feeling the toes touching, reaching with the crown of the head, tucking the chin. So the pole, so the, the, you're having two different energies going there. One is reaching up and the other is extending down. And you feel the spine lengthening. Rick was just saying a little, a little while ago that uh, he grew an inch since his last physical. This is not uncommon if you do this correctly, because what happens is by, by creating these pulls in opposition, you're lengthening the spine. You're creating actual more physical space between the vertebrae. And your body likes that because it makes things go a little more smoothly. And relax your lower back. Allow your hips to, there's a tendency I think if you're leaning backward to kind of push the butt out and and jut the body forward, which kind of creates this this lean, and we don't want that. We want to uh, drop. So you're rotating your pelvis like this, but it's not a force thing. It's just a you're doing it by flattening out the small of the back. So whenever you do that, you reaching up with the crown and allowing your pelvis to, to get level 
you then create more uh, ease of movement in the hip joints. And the key is to be able to slow it down enough to be able to feel what that feels like to do all these things simultaneously. And you may find you have to go back and correct because things slip out as you introduce new ideas into the system. And one of the things that will happen is you tend to push away again, which causes tension, which causes things to lock up. So we want to push away consciously and then uh, release down again. And one of the paradoxes is by releasing down, relaxing the body that you actually get taller. You lengthen the spine, you lengthen all the tissues in the body by doing that. You're creating more internal space. So by, by taking the, dropping the tailbone, getting the pelvis so it's level, knees stay unlocked, reach for that crown. You have a verticality in your posture. without a lot of strain. It's not like a military posture with shoulders back, chest out, you know, it's, it's, it's the opposite of that. It's a sinking and releasing. And Kind of relaxedly turn from the hips. So you're just allowing the hip joints to rotate more freely, which is easier to do if you have the pelvis lined up correctly. And you go back and you check and feel into your feet and say, okay, am I favoring one foot or the other? And you may notice some chronic tension, you bump into that chronic tension as, as you let go, because the years of, of patterning where your body tries to correct for imbalances, tries to reassert itself. And it tries to do the familiar. And that's okay. But you go back and you do this. And the more often you do it, this becomes familiar then your body mind gets a chance to choose which feels better. Reach with the elbows a little bit. See your arms are slightly rounded. And opening the shoulders. Feel the energetic connection throughout the whole system, throughout your whole body. Feel the energy in your hands, your feet. And there are internal martial artists and masters who just do this. They, they just hang out in 
standing meditation and just feel that energetic connection because it's the more you do it, the more it replenishes your vitality when you plug into the big chi. You feel the yang chi of the heavens coming down through your body and not through your feet. You feel the yin chi of the earth rising through your feet and out the top of your head. You feel plugged into a much bigger system. Now sink into your left leg. Uh, spiral down to the right, pivot out on your right heel. You feel the ball of the right foot. Push your right knee out and set that. Now, just feel your weight's about 60% in the right leg and 30% in the left. Just feel into that and find your center equilibrium in this posture by your the verticality of your body. Relax your lower back and allow the energy to rise up your leg to feel that support there, sinking down. Feel that energetic connection. Feel the support of your right leg since it's doing the primary work right now and get comfortable in this transitional posture. But oftentimes we kind of hurry through the transitional postures because they don't feel comfortable. We're looking for something a little more solid. Well, we want to get it so that every point along the way, it feels equally familiar equally comfortable. And then spiral down to the right. So you're loading up that right leg even more. So you're emptying out the left leg as you do that. And important not to bend. You're just vertical. Release, spiraling down to the right. Pick up the left heel. And just feel into that. So now you've got about 90% in your right leg. And actually lower back and just feel that. Feel the support of that leg. And step forward with the left, the heel of the left foot. Place the foot down. You're back to about 90% in the left leg, 80, 90%, or in the right leg, I'm sorry. But feel into that. Feel the verticality of your posture as you're there. You'll notice the work that's being done by your leg. It's a different kind of work. It's not the pushing away young effort of muscles. It's the relax, sink, yin aspect. It's where you're settling down into your connective tissue system. You're getting sung. And now feel the ball of the left foot and push your left knee out without shifting weight into it. So your very tiny bit of weight gets, gets distributed there, but you're still working from the from the right leg, that's still doing you know, at least 70, 80% of the work. But feel into the verticality of your posture. Reach with the crown of your head. Feel the energy moving throughout the whole structure. Push the knee forward. So you're feeling the contact with the ball of the left foot. And by doing that, you're starting to load up that. You settle down, release down into that left leg. 
And by doing that, you're releasing some of the weight, some of the, the dependence on the, on the right leg. Feel the, that central equilibrium. And if I were to turn to the side, you can, you can feel that it's like ball, knee, and then ah, you're, you're settling down. The, the spine is still straight. Your, your crown is reaching up. You have that verticality in your posture. And there's some postures where you'll consciously bow forward, but you'll have it so it's lined up, your back will be lined up with your, with your leg. And that's fine too. But for what we're doing right now, we wanna really emphasize the, the vertical posture where you're actually dropping a plumb bob and just having it go straight down through your body. So developing a sensitivity for that verticality. Make, make whatever little corrections you need to in order to, to get your body lined up. Now feel the ball of your right foot and set the right knee and release, actually push away with your, with your, the leg muscles in your right leg and then uh, release, sink down into your right leg without leaning backwards. You're not going back like that. You're, you're still keeping your body vertical, but you're releasing at the qua, he's releasing, getting sung at the qua and keeping that verticality there. But now your weight's primarily being supported by your right leg. Pivot on your left heel and come back to center. And find your verticality there. Feel the, the power that comes from this the structure from having the integration that the structure gives you. Even though you're very sung, your, your muscles are not tense, you have a, there's a, a vitality that comes through that, which is expressed as jin. The energy when it's allowed to take form, it can be expressed in a very powerful way. Step in, take a deep breath, and disappear the chi. It's pausing to feel into the, you know, 
how your body feels in this in this posture. You've thrown away the the chi that you're manufacturing, but you're it's being replaced by the nature chi as it moves through you. There's a sense of being plugged in, something much bigger. Cool. Why don't you sit down? See if there's any questions. Any questions, difficulties, Scott? Can't hear you. Yeah. There you are. Nope. Why I never put this together before is beyond me, but I have a, I've had a habit probably my whole life of arching my back when I'm doing anything strenuous. And that's kind of the problem was I'm arching my back. So that's pushing my hips back. So my hips weren't. So that's that's the, where the issue is, is I need to keep working on letting it. Because, I mean, as we were doing that exercise, I had to keep releasing the hips. You know, keep letting the hips go forward. It just They just kept coming back. Interesting. That, that's, that's terrific to be able to spot a lifelong pattern like that, you know, in, uh, in a relatively short time. So that's, that's perfect. All right. Great. Wonderful. Um, Valerie, Valerina. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to let that go, you know. I know. Nor uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting in that I won't say it's easy, but rel it's relatively easy to maintain that posture when you're standing still. And then to take that show on the road when you start moving, whether it's just in regular life or when you're doing the form, a form, blah, blah. Um, it's And this is something I try to hammer into my students is this is the show you take on the road. It's not just while we're standing still. This is posture. This is the way to unkink the hose, keep the energy flowing. And, you know. I still get out of alignment. It's, you know, you well know I'm not in alignment all the time. Um, I'm getting better, but um, it's just it's just interesting that, you know, it can come come so easily standing still, but move and it's like, what? Never heard of that. <laughs> that's, a, that's an excellent point because that's true for us all. You know, and particularly if we're we have a a destination in mind, you know that takes precedence over how we get there. Arriving at the destination is more important than the than the uh, you know any kind of uh, the way you do it. You know the the way you're you're moving your through space. So to actually like slowing it down like this allows you to appreciate the subtleties of, you know, of how you hold your body. And then you can, once you get that, you can extrapolate into the, uh, you know, into more and more complex motions. Yeah, Valerie. Um, I also note that, you know, I've, for me right now, what I'm, I'm focusing on is feeling my hands without tension. And when I, you know, when I feel tension in my hands, I can trace it back to my wrists. And usually that can trace back to my elbow, which traces back to my fingers. And that will also remind me because it's directly related to my tailbone, right? And to my feet. So they're, you know, obviously everything's all connected. But um, I don't think I've ever had um, this kind of relationship 
or thought to focus on something like just tension in my hands and how that relates to everything. So that's been helping me then to correct my posture as I'm doing form, because it's real easy to feel if you're focusing on your hand, that like, ah, no, that's tension. Ah, no, that's not tension. And then, you know, everything aligns after that. But, you know, there's tension to be had, you know, and corrections to be made, which is the 18. You know, I, I, I like that. I like that, you know. I was discussing this with somebody. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. Um, but he's on Facebook and he's been to Tai Chi Alchemy several times. Scott Brumley. Brumley. Oh, and, yeah. yeah, it's like it, it. it's endless. You know, the possibilities, the corrections and the, the, the subtleties, the depth. It's just endless, which is absolutely marvelous. Uh, terrific. Terrific. Oh, Kim had something in the chat. Say again. Kim had something in the chat. Uh, in fact, I feel the silence has substance. Question: Can the silence cross the Western Gate? Explain, Kim. Oh, I'm uh, I'm on mute. Uh, It's, I, I go blank. Is there something beyond blank? You go blank, meaning, what does that, what does that mean? What, go, what goes blank? Well, my mind, my, my, my thoughts. Uh, it's just uh, like, I'm not there. Uh, so uh, there's a couple of ways to take that. One is that uh, you're uh, you're going unconscious, and the other is that you are moving into the gap between thoughts, so you're not thinking for the moment, but you're you're very much aware of what's going on. Uh, which would which would that be? Uh... It's hard to tell, actually. Um, I. It could be unconscious. I. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Is this something I should avoid or or try to? I don't know. Well, yeah. There's a, a thing of, you know, like fading out and just kind of going into a reverie or something. And there's another thing where you are, you're very much present, even more present than when you're thinking, where you're aware of what's going on, but the, you also notice that your mind has calmed and you're in, uh, a very aware, but not busy place. Is this, is this a good thing? <laughs> can be. It can be. It's something that it's a thing. It's a, it's one one of the one of the radio stations on on the dial, and it is a uh, uh, it's something that it's good to cultivate. It's good to be able to shut down your the the noise machine of the mind and be able to move into a state of awareness where you can know without thinking uh, I, I haven't gotten to the knowledge part I, like this morning um there's a there's a 20 minute ferry war, ride between staten island and manhattan and uh so this morning I, i'm sitting in, in in a chair it's not too crowded. It's this is 6:20, 6:30 in the morning. It's still dark. And I sit there and 20 minutes later I almost say where am I, you know? Uh 
you know, and I get up and, you know, I, I realize where I am and then I go forward. But uh, I'm not sure if that's healthy or not, you know, uh, I'm, I'm certainly not thinking. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, I think the, the question is how aware, you know, are you when you're not thinking? Because there's what, you know, there are three, three primary ways of breaking down awareness in, in the model that I embrace, which is pre-conscious, conscious, and superconscious. Pre-conscious means that the vast amount of your experience, which is uh, happening prior to becoming you knowing that you know it. Uh -huh. Okay, that's pre-conscious. And that's most of what's going on in, in your life. Most of what's happening. You're not aware of each heartbeat. You're not aware of, you know, the movement of your hair. You're not, there's all kinds of things that are occurring. Is the vast amount of information that is coming in the environment is not registering at a conscious level. That is, you're not thinking about it. Conscious, the conscious mind is where you are actually saying, oh, that is a turnip, or that coffee is hot, or geez, you know, this, this ferry is crowded today, whatever, these are conscious thoughts. Yeah. Okay, and that's most of the busy work that's going on in our minds is happening at that level. And it, the thoughts are being churned out constantly, even though it's a tiny part of your awareness, it's the one that occupies us the most. It's called the default mode network because it's the one that's constantly updating your narrative and, and reminding you who you are and what you should be afraid of and what you should be cautious of and, and how things are moving. And boy, did I remember to do these things. Da, 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 da. And that's, that's, your, that's happening at the conscious level. And then beyond that is where you have body, mind, integration, which then opens the eye of spirit. And that's where you are aware, you're just not thinking about it. Uh. Okay, then, and that's a super conscious state. It's body, mind, spirit integration. When that happens, cool stuff happens. So all the exercises we are doing are designed to make that easier to facilitate being able to go to that superconscious state, to be able to be awake in your life as much as you want to be, and that's uh, that's that's the game. It's how much how much of my day am I awake? So if you're drifting off and you're like, you know, in a daydream, that's perfectly acceptable. It's not bad. But it's a, uh, you know, it's more of a pre-conscious kind of kind of state. Then, you know, uh, superconscious would be like you're able to be there, aware of the vast amount of information that's out there, and you're not thinking about any of it, but you're aware of it. Mm. And that's kind of the direction that these exercises are taking us. But that requires being bringing conscious awareness to the pre-conscious. Wow. So every time you move your arm and you do it knowingly, intentionally, that is where body, mind integrate. So you're awakening parts of your nervous system and parts of your brain that have been asleep maybe most of your life uh -huh. Uh -huh. and so it's a gradual process of awakening because <clears throat> we can have flashes of awakening but then we collapse back into our existing mental structures because they're comfortable they're familiar but if you do a simple exercise like what we just did where you are conscious of how you're holding your body, how you are 
moving through space without thinking about it. You're just aware. And then you think, and in order, if you find you notice that, oh, things are moving in the wrong direction, then you use your conscious mind to make a correction, mm -hmm. bring it back. Say, oh, oh yeah, oh, I'm, I'm tense, oh. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, good. Then you can go back to knowing without thinking, back into super consciousness. And then when you get comfortable in that state, then it becomes your platform, becomes a new platform, a new level of development that enables you to go even further into heightened states of awareness and heightened states of ability. Have you experienced that? We all have. <laughs> what we're doing, what we're doing here is consciously, intentionally doing things that make it more familiar. You've been there. And it just we all have. It's just a question that usually it's just it's a lightning bug. Uh, uh, a hot July night. It's like, oh, there it is. Oh, where to go? Yeah. You know, that's usually what happens. What we're trying to do is say, no, no, let's let's get a bunch of these lightning bugs together, you know, and uh, be able to like, you know, tune into that so much so that it becomes, oh, it's getting brighter and brighter. It's illuminating the path. Then you become light emitting you become the lightning bug you become the the source of the light you have turned the light around like a chap the last chapter of, of of western gate i talk about turning the light around that's where you become the source of light but you to do that you have to walk the steps you have to get to a point where you You've done the work so that your body, mind, spirit integration becomes dependable to you. Wow. And that's what 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 more fun game can there be wow. <laughs> than that, right? It's like, yeah, yay. Because <laughs> well, it, it, it illuminates everything in your life. Wow. What thank you. That, thank you. Wow. What a... <laughs> Oh, it's, 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 it's a, we know how to do it. We have the technology. <laughs> now it's just a question of actually doing the work. Wow. And 